So this is monitoring and control of our project that we've been planning over the series of lectures. The aims of this series of video clips is to look at the monitoring and control process and the learning objectives are to make sure that we are reporting progress and communicating with our project team members formally and informally. We're going to be looking at what we need to track on the project and the main categories of what we need to track. One of the most difficult things to track on a project is the cost. So a good portion of this lecture is looking at tracking costs on project. We're also going to have to manage change on the project. So we're going to introduce a change management process such that any proposed change is authorised and recorded and evaluated and accepted and communicated. And finally, we're going to have to get back on plan. When we're, we're late and we need to catch up, we're going to have a look at the methods for getting back on the project plan. A reminder about why we created a plan in the first place. At uh, the beginning of the Project Planning 1 and the Project Planning 2 lectures, I said, well, why are we creating a plan? And it wasn't just to find out what we're doing and who's doing it and how much it costs or how long it takes or where the critical path is. The purpose of a plan was to have a map of the journey so we can monitor progress as we go through the project. So we can relate, are we early, are we late? Do we need to speed up, do we need to slow down? If we don't have a plan, then we can't compare where we should be. Then we can't take any corrective action to get back to the plan. In fact, I believe this is really the, the third biggest reason why projects fail, that we create a plan in the start of the project, in the initiation phase, but then we don't monitor and control it. We don't monitor and control the project closely enough. We don't communicate or report and then we find out we're off the plan and we go, well, it's too late, we're two months late now, and never mind, let's just carry on. So I think this is a big uh, reason for project failure. I think the biggest reason for project failure is not having clear objectives or agreed objectives. And I think the second reason for project failure is about communication in its many methods. So here's our project life cycle, and uh, we've been planning the project um, we're now running the project. And so we're at all of these stages because as we run the project, things are going to change. Some of those risks are going to happen. We're going to have to put in our mitigation plans. So we're going to have to change the plan. So we're going to iterate around this area of preparing new information, executing the plan, putting it into practice, monitoring what's happening, finding out we need to do another change. Monitoring control is about a lot of things. It's about having some sort of control procedure so you know what you're tracking, how frequently you're tracking it, and how you're reporting it. It's about knowing when to involve the senior management. When can a project manager make decisions about the small variations, but when should the senior management be involved? It's about understanding how much project management to do on your project. If it's a runner project, it shouldn't need as much project management. It shouldn't need as much control. We're going to be talking about formal and informal monitoring of the project, uh, making sure we've got a decent filing system of the documents uh, for the project, and managing change on the project such that we can uh, authorise the proposals when things change on the project. When we've completed planning, what we need to do is create a project baseline. So we can plan the project, this is what we think is going to happen, and it's an iterative process and our plan gets more and more refined, but eventually we say, look, this is as close as I'm going to get to a good plan. I'm going to copy all of this into a baseline. So a baseline means a copy of the estimates, estimates of work, estimates of cost, estimates of duration. We copy those into a baseline, and then we can enter the actual values. Now, unless you're really lucky, things won't go as planned. Some things will be early, some things will be late. Some things will cancel each other out. 
several things might be late, several things might become under budget, you're now not on plan. And you can compare what's actually happening with the baseline. And eventually, when you've got enough data, you can start to forecast some outcomes. If this continues, we're going to be somewhere where we don't want to be, way over budget, way late. So we need to take corrective actions to get back to the plan, to the baseline. It all sounds like a lot of work. It, it is a lot of work, but your senior management are going to want to know how the project is going. And rather than saying, yeah, yeah, it's going okay, thanks, perhaps we need something a little more robust to tell the senior management about the progress of our project. So our project baseline is a copy of the estimates. When we have got the plan as refined as we think we can, we copy the estimates into a baseline. And then when we enter the actual data, we're not overwriting our original estimates. Now, you do this in Microsoft Project. We'll have a PC lab on this if you're on that module. And we'll actually copy the estimates into the baseline, put in some actual data, and compare where we are. 